Yeah, so for me, it's, it's been one of the most painful times in my Christian life, really. The last couple of years have been, um, well, it's felt like multiple kicks in the gut, really, for us. I think for a while, we've been aware of abuse scandals in a number of places, certainly not just among churches or Christian organizations, but it's come very close to home recently. It's been horrible. People have been very badly abused and hurt and damaged. Looking back over the decades of cultures that I have been a part of and thinking, how did we get to this point? I think there, there is reason to be angry at, at some of this. In fact, I know there is reason to be angry. How, how, how did this happen? How was this allowed to happen and go on for as long as it did? How did people not see that this was wrong at the time? How did, why did people just sort of turn a blind eye to it? Did they, did they not? Who knew, what did they know? <laughs> it's ironic, isn't it? As evangelicals, we would want to say that we have a good doctrine of sin and that the need for grace is because we are all deeply sinful. And yet it has been shocking to be confronted with that sin amongst ourselves and people who we have respected and looked up to. Evangelical churches across the spectrum of evangelicalism that CEC represents need to engage with questions about how we use the power, the authority we've been given as ministers of the gospel. We've been working together and we have produced two resources. One of them is a liturgy of lament, um, including survivor stories that a church or an individual could go through. It's a liturgy that gives us a chance to say to God what we're feeling using words that he's provided us in scripture. The Lord gives us the language to cry out to him. Um, he gives us psalms of, of lament. Uh, he gives us words to say when we don't know what to say. And uh, part of the, the, the givenness of this liturgy is to, is to help us speak and to cry out in ways that we, we, we can't on our own. We don't have a language for lament very comfortably. We don't often practice it. We don't share it, certainly corporately and collectively. And it's, it's been a way of bringing our real hearts at grief to God. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes as I sleep in death. We've also got these culture review questions taking four big areas that all churches would want to engage with and asking questions in light of God's word. How can we better reflect his character and listen to a range of voices? We've tried not to make assumptions about the kinds of issues that there might be or the kinds of processes or the kinds of dynamics and, and the cultures that people experience, but to open up ways of asking questions about issues that we think every group of people will need to deal with. The questions that churches can ask themselves, can reflect on together to work out what has been healthy about our culture, but what also has been unhealthy. Some churches will immediately start with the liturgy of the men because we know that things have gone wrong. Other churches might start with a review question and that might lead into lament because that's the point when we recognise we've got things wrong. I think speaking as a survivor myself and having listened to the stories of survivors who've often suffered far more than I did, um, there is a sense that this is a, a life sentence. It really does damage people very, very badly. In the Psalms, it talks about how God is our refuge and strength, and in many ways, churches should be places of real refuge. And tragically, that's not often been true in the past. And so it's vital not only that we engage with safeguarding and with training and, and so on, but also we do look more seriously at the culture of our churches and actually think, well, what, what about the culture just might lead people to go astray, might lead abuse to go unchecked, uh, might lead uh, power dynamics to get uh, unbalanced. Uh, so I think that this resource will really help churches to engage with those kind of questions. If we put our trust in princes, they will disappoint us. But Jesus never will let us down in that way. We have in Jesus not somebody, not just somebody that says, follow me, but somebody that helps us to follow him. 
and we have the power of the Spirit in us as Christians to follow the model that Jesus has set us in Scripture, to be leaders that lay down our lives for the people uh, that we've been given to serve rather than lording it over them, as so often has been the case to our shame in evangelical uh, churches. Thank you.